Hi, I'm Jenny Fish from One Big Happy Yarn Company. We want to be your local yarn shop no matter where you are. Welcome to our One Big Happy Toe Up Socks Knit Along. In this episode, I'll be going over all the supplies that you need to make these socks. I'll explain why I call the pattern a recipe and show you how you can cast on using a technique called the provisional cast on. We have everything you need to knit, measure, and block a pair of socks at OneBigHappy.com. Are you ready to learn the basics of toe up socks? Let's get started. In this episode, I'm giving you a lot of information. There's a lot of knowledge that I'm sharing with you and some tips and tricks. For the beginner, this is gonna be amazing information, foundational information that you need to start these socks. As an, uh, an, a more experienced knitter, you're gonna come across some tips and tricks that are gonna be helpful for you. But I just wanna let you know beforehand that there's just a lot of information that I'm gonna be passing along in this episode. And in the next few episodes, we'll get more into the sock knitting. So let's look at some of the supplies that we have. Okay, so the supplies that we'll be needing today. Number one, we need the yarn. This is the Cascade Heritage Prince yarn. It's 75% merino superwash wool and 25% nylon. The reason for the nylon is to give it some structure. Nothing's worse than making a pair of socks that's 100% wool, you've invested all that time in it, and then after a few wears, it may get some holes or show some fading. So get one that has nylon, we have chosen the Heritage Prints. Now we have several colors available on our site. The one thing about the Heritage Prints yarn that I absolutely love is that it is a self-striping or self-patterning yarn. And what this means is that the yarn is specifically dyed, it's computerized, it's ran through a machine, each section is dyed pretty much the same exact area, each color along the way, to make it so that when you knit it up, it has a pattern already there for you. It takes a lot of the stress out of picking out your colors, changing out colors, it's all right here in one ball of yarn. So the needles that I'll be using for this knit along are a US size two or a 2.75 millimeter needle. I'm using magic loop method, so I need a 40 inch cable. So I've got 40 inches here. Some other supplies that we'll be using is the One Big Happy Sock Check. This is so we can measure the foot. We'll know what size we're gonna be making for the foot and for the leg. I'll show you how to use this as well. And we will be using the One Big Happy Yarn Co. Sock Blockers. These are adjustable for shoe size. So we've got the shoe size listed here. You can remove and uh, um, replace this to the size that you need to block your socks, and I'll show you how to use that as well. So those are some of the basic supplies that we'll be using to knit these toe-up socks. Okay, so I also wanna dip a little bit more into the Heritage Prince yarn. I've got two examples here of socks that I've made. This one is made with the Mod colorway, and this one is made with the Flame colorway. If you'll notice on the Mod colorway, they match up almost exactly. They're very matchy-matchy. I made sure to start each sock in the same area of the repeat. Now the flame, you'll notice, doesn't match up exactly. It's not super matchy-matchy. And what happened here when I was making these is I came across a knot in the ball of yarn, and that happens. Um, they make lots of balls of yarn. They need to get it to a specific yardage amount in each ball so that you have enough to make your socks plus extra. Sometimes they have to put a knot in there to add in some more yarn. So that is the case with the flames that I made here was that I came across a knot. When you come across a knot, you have a couple of different options. Um, one, and this is what I did here, is I just snipped the knot out, picked up the other end, and started knitting again, um, and continued going on, then I wove in the ends later. Uh, another option that you can have is using a magic knot. Um, you could do some kind of join, like a Russian join, or if you really want it to be matchy-matchy and you know this going into your project, you can rewind your ball of yarn to check to make sure if there is any knots in your ball. And if there is, then you can plan accordingly of where you wanna start each sock so they match up exactly. Um, there is plenty of yarn in the ball 
to compensate for a knot. Anytime there's a knot in a ball of yarn, in any ball of yarn, the manufacturer will give you extra yardage in that ball to compensate for that knot. It is uh, normal to find knots in your balls of yarn. I just want to point that out, so don't get frustrated when that happens. It does happen, but they compensate for that. Okay, so now that we've talked about the self-patterning, self-striping yarn, and how to make a matchy-matchy or just go with the flow and keep on knitting, I also want to talk about why I call this a recipe um, more than a pattern or a formula. It's a recipe. And the reason for that, we want to go back to gauge. I know it sounds a little complicated, but this pattern is basically giving you an idea of how to make the sock. You're making this sock to fit a specific foot and feet come in different sizes. So this recipe starts out with general information, gauge. We've got 32 stitches in four inches and 40 rounds in four inches. We're using a size two needle. That's a pretty small needle. As with most projects, or as with all projects, when you're trying to obtain gauge, you know that if you have too many stitches per inch, then you need to go up a needle size. But if you have too few stitches per inch, you need to go down a needle size. Well, you're already at a two. You could go down to a one or a zero if you're not making the 32 stitches in four inches. However, this is a recipe, so feel free to modify that and change that. And what you can do is add more stitches instead of going to a smaller needle. And this will give you more stitches per, uh, or more stitches around the circumference of the foot. Now, in this recipe, it is based off of multiples of four. So if you are gonna add stitches, you wanna make sure that you add four stitches at a time add in multiples of four. That way the rest of the recipe will work out just fine for you and you can figure out the math that makes it super easy and not crazy math. Now, I really wanna go over that with the gauge, but I did get 32 stitches and 40 rounds for four inches. So the type of needle that I'm using, I spoke about this earlier, but I'm using a 40 inch circular needle because I'll be using Magic Loop. Now you can choose to use some other needles. There are way more options out there to make socks. Um, this is just my preferred method, but you could use double pointed needles. You could use two circular needles, and you could also even use a one nine inch needle. And that's completely up to you. I highly suggest trying them out and seeing what you like, but this is my preferred method and this is what I'll be using for this knit along. Okay, so now we've got our needles out of the way and we have talked about our yarn we wanna do a quick overview of the anatomy of a sock. So, it's pretty basic, but we have a toe. So when I'm talking about the toe, this is the portion right here that I'll be talking about. Then we have the foot portion, the heel, the leg, and then this is called the cuff right here where you see this stitch pattern change a little and then we'll also be binding off at the end. Now I do have another video in our, um, on our channel that is for a top or a cuff down sock. And that's where we start with the ribbing here at the top and work our way down. In this video or knit along, we are gonna be starting at the toe and moving up. So if you wanna check out the differences, you can also watch the other one or you can um, just follow along right now with the toe up. Let's get started with the toe. For this toe, we're gonna to be using a technique called a provisional cast on. This is gonna create a cup right down here. Before we even get started knitting in the round, we're gonna start knitting flat back and forth and building up a cup. So there's no seaming, and it's kind of like a little magic trick. So I wanna show you how to start the provisional cast on. First thing you're gonna need is a crochet hook and some scrap yarn. We're gonna start out with making a crochet chain, and we want to make a slip knot at the beginning. We'll put our crochet hook in the slip knot and tighten it up. Okay, I am a knitter. I crochet sometimes, so I'm not as comfortable with the crochet hook as I am with the knitting needles, 
but I can crochet a chain. So I have used, I've made a slip knot, I've got my crochet hook, I'm gonna slide it in, then I'm gonna grab that yarn and pull it through. Grab that yarn. Now you want to chain about five or six extra chains. Each one of these little loops is called a chain, by the way. So you wanna make about five or six extra chains than the size that you're casting on. Now I'm gonna do um, the middle size. Now this pattern has three different sizes. We have a child size, and then we have what we call an adult narrow, which is basically a woman's size, and then an adult wide, which is basically a man's size. You can adjust those sizes. Um, the child size is a five inch circumference around the foot, and that's a relaxed um, measurement. So that's before the sock is put on the foot. It's as it's laying down, it's five inches. The adult narrow is um, seven inches, and the adult wide is eight inches. Now my foot, if I measure the largest portion of my foot, is nine inches. But I make the um, narrow size that's a seven because there's that much stretch in the fabric. So be aware of that when you're picking the size that you wanna cast on. But I'm gonna use the uh, seven inch circumference size, the adult narrow and I'm casting on 28 stitches, so I'm gonna be chaining um, at least five or six more of that. Okay, so once I get these all on here, and I honestly have lost count, so I'm just gonna keep going for a couple more just to be safe, so we have that there. Okay, so once you get all of your chains cast on, then um, you want to cut your yarn, and I'm using the mindful scissors here. I really like these because they can close in like that, pretty safe around the kiddos. Okay, so you take the end of your yarn and you put it through the loop and pull it. Now here's a little tip. You want to put a knot right here. That indicates that that's the side that you fastened off on, and that comes in handy later on. Okay, so I have the side with the knot on the right. This is where I fastened off. Now, you're gonna see these little bumps here, and I really wanna see these, want you to see these really good so you know what this looks like. On the back side of that chain, you're gonna see, for us knitters, what looks like a pearl bump and they call it a, a crochet bump on the back. See these little dashes here? That's what we wanna knit into to make our cast on. So go about two or three stitches in and slide your needle under that bump just like that. Then you're gonna take your working yarn from your ball, wrap it around your needle and pull it through. Now you have cast on one stitch. And this is how you start the provisional cast on. So I need to do 28 of these and you'll do whatever um, amount of cast on that's in the pattern for the size that you're wanting to make. Okay, straighten this out. I'm gonna do 28 right through all of these bumps. It's important that you get through the bump. Try very hard not to split your yarn. That'll also be helpful later on. Look at that, my needle fell right through. Okay, let's slide it back through here. Okay, there we go. Go through there, don't split your yarn, and then just keep wrapping around and bringing it down and through. So I'll continue doing this until I have 28 new loops on my needle. Go through. It does get a little fussy, but now is, is the time to go slow, pick up each of these stitches, get them on your needle. This is the foundation of starting your sock, so you want to make sure that it's nice and clear and clean as you pick these up. Okay, I wanna show you a quick little way how I count 
you know, my kid, he is in first grade and he's um, learning all this new math and they're teaching them math in different ways than I learned as a kid. And um, they're grouping things. And it makes so much more sense to me when I see his homework now. I'm like, oh, I wish I would have been taught this when I was a kid. Like they group 10 and then however many is left over, then they know that that's the second number. So like they circle 10 and there's three left over. He knows then the answer is 13. And I'm like, that's so clever. But then when I got to thinking about it, that is almost how I count my knit stitches is I group them as I count them. And I want to show you that. For me, I group in three and then two, and I know that's five. And then I do three and two, and I know that's 10. It just works for me as I do that. And, and it's something I just have done for many years and haven't even thought about it. And then seeing my, uh, seeing Garrett's first grade homework and they're grouping him, I'm like, huh, okay, I thought I was onto something clever. Not just me, <laughs> but it works, it truly works. Okay, so there's three more. So I'm gonna continue on until I have 28 stitches on here. And then I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so I've got 28 stitches on here. I'm gonna use my math counting skills here. I've got five, 10, 15, 20, 25. Oh, see, <laughs> good thing I counted. I got one more to cast on here and then we'll be finished. There we go, I've got 28 stitches on here. So now you can see that the hardest part about the provisional cast on is actually saying the word provisional. <laughs> I know I've given you a lot of information in this episode, but this information is important. It gives you a foundation of knowledge to help you get started. So go ahead and order your kit at onebighappy.com. It comes with the printed pattern slash recipe and your selected color of yarn. Then practice this provisional cast on and join me in the next episode where I show you how to work a German short row toe. Be sure to hit the subscribe button below and click the bell to be notified every time we have a new video. Happy knitting!